Alright, in this video we're going to talk about derivatives of logarithmic functions. And the basic formula says if you have just plain old ln of x, the derivative of that is just 1 over x. The derivative, if you have something more complicated inside, it says the derivative of ln of something more complicated, you get 1 over the complicated stuff, and then you have to multiply by the derivative of that complicated stuff. Um, analogous formula for log base a, this is kind of similar to the a to the x, um, the exponential derivative formulas. It says if you have log base a of x and take the derivative, again you get 1 over x, but you have to tag on a natural logarithm of a, and that goes in the denominator. Likewise, if you have the derivative of log base a of some stuff, you get 1 over that stuff, Again, you have to tack on the natural logarithm of the base, and then you multiply by the derivative of that stuff. So again, just some new formulas, unfortunately, that you may have to commit to memory. So let's do a few examples. An important thing also, too, I want to point out, when you're doing derivatives of logarithmic functions, and I definitely have an example dealing with one of these, remember your properties of logarithms. Um, because you can use those properties to simplify the thing that you're going to take the derivative of. You can simplify that thing down much easy into a much easier form. All right, so let's start off here with um, our the derivative of ln of x squared, the quantity x squared plus 10. So it says the derivative of that, I've got ln of some stuff, it says, hey, you get 1 over that stuff, x squared plus 10, and then you have to multiply by the derivative of that stuff, which is just going to be 2x. And if you want to, you could certainly put the 2x up on the numerator. And that's all there is to it. In the next problem, okay, I, I see a square root of x times an ln of x, so I think, okay, I'm going to have to use the product rule. All right, no problem. So the, recall that square root of x is x to the 1 half. If I take the derivative of that, I'll get 1 half x. I'll subtract 1 away and get negative 1 half. And again, I'm leaving the ln of x term alone. Plus, now I'll leave the square root of x alone. And if I multiply by the derivative of ln of x, I just get 1 over x. So obviously you could rewrite this thing a little bit. You could put your negative exponents in the denominator. You have x to the 1 half divided by x to the first. You could certainly simplify this part down. Um, but as far as just mechanically taking the derivative, we're now done with the derivative. The only thing left to do would be some algebra. Okay, so here's an example of, of where we want to use properties of logarithms. So I see ln of some complicated stuff. I could use the formula, you know, just like I did up here in my beginning example. I could take 1 over all of this stuff, and then when I go to take the derivative of the inside, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule, but I see these powers. I'm also going to have to use the chain rule. It's going to get pretty tedious. So I'm not taking the derivative yet. Remember, if you have a natural logarithm of a quotient, as we do in this case, you can rewrite that quotient as subtraction. So I've got 2x plus 1 raised to the third power minus the denominator ln of 3x minus 1 to the fourth power. And I'm kind of moving from brackets to parentheses. I don't, there's no particular reason why. So um, recall now, too, if you have the thing that you're taking the natural logarithm of, if that's being raised to a power, you can pull that power out front. So that's what I'll do. I'll pull my 4 out front. Okay. And again, I haven't done, I haven't taken the derivative at all yet. All I've done is just simplified this down using properties of logarithms. But again, the benefit is going to be that the, when I do go to take the derivative, it's much easier to take the derivative of this thing than it would be to use the quotient rule and the product rule and all of that stuff. So now, let's squeeze all this in here. If I do take the derivative, 
Okay, the 3 is just going to come along for the ride. The derivative of ln of 2x plus 1. Well, I get 1 over the stuff, so 1 over 2x plus 1. And then I multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is times 2. So now I've taken the derivative of the first part. And I'll do the same thing for the second one. Times 1 over 3x minus 1. And then again, I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be multiplied by 3. So again, you could simplify this down. You'd have a 3 times 2 in the numerator. You could have 6 over 2x plus 1. Likewise, you'd have 4 times 3, so you'd have negative 12 over 3x minus 1. Um, and again, that would be it. So as far as the derivative part goes, we're now finished. And you can probably verify, if you actually went through and did this original problem the long way, did the chain rule, did the quotient rule, did all that, cleaned it up, cleaned it up, cleaned it up, you would end up with this. Only though it would take you probably about five sheets of paper to get through it all. So again, moral of the story, it's a very important moral to remember. Use properties of logarithms when you can to simplify it down. All right, so one last problem here with um, logarithms. And in this one, I picked a different, I didn't use the natural logarithm. So here we have to be careful. Um, I see a, a 2 out here, and I, I just like in the last example, you know, you may feel the urge to pull that 2 out front. But notice the distinction. On the other problems, it was ln, and the stuff inside the brackets was being raised to the power. Now the whole logarithm is being raised to the power. So if I pulled that 2 out front, that would be incorrect. Okay, so you have to be careful of the, the distinction there. So I'm going to take the derivative. This is going to be kind of a long one. So I'm going to use a chain rule a bunch. So the 2 will come out front. I'll leave the inside part alone. And I'm sure I'm going to run out of room before I get done with this one. So I'll take 1 away from the power and get a power of 1. I now have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside stuff. So I'm using the formula for a generic logarithm. It says you get 1 over the stuff, so 1 plus e to the x. Make sure you keep that in parentheses. I have to tack on the natural logarithm of this base into the denominator. So I've got a natural logarithm of 4 that's going to be down there hanging out. And now I've got to move inside again and multiply by the derivative of the inside part. So when I multiply by the derivative of the 1 plus e to the x, I'm just going to get times e to the x. And that would be everything. That would be your derivative. So sorry about the little brackets and the dotted lines. Um, but again, this is the idea. You just keep moving inside, moving inside, moving inside. Um, and recall, you know, the logarithm, when you have addition inside the logarithm, you can't simplify that. Only when you have addition, or excuse me, only when you have multiplication or division can you simplify it down. So definitely look around. Um, if you've forgotten your properties of logarithms, hey, visit my website, justmathtutoring.com. At the time of me doing this video, I don't have one up there just yet, but um, I'm definitely going to have one up pretty quickly. So unless you happen to see this um, today, October 07, um, you'll probably be okay and you can dig around and find a video. Just click on the tab on the left, the free video lessons, and there should be a video somewhere entitled Properties of Logarithms. It may be under the section, the algebra section and not the calculus section. Hope these examples make some sense and help you out.